Hi, and welcome again to Field Engineering. I'm JD Brake, your host, and with me is my good buddy, Phil Kimball, who is a titan here at Jackson Systems. <laughs> uh, just years and years of knowledge and expertise. And Phil, we're actually, we talked about some tools that are essential for the HVAC tech, and we're going to drill down on that and talk about a very specific tool that every tech should have, the multimeter. Now, That's right. What can you tell me? Why is the multimeter so important? Have you ever used a multimeter? I have not. All right. Well, we're going to show you what a multimeter okay. is. All right. This is a multimeter. Okay. Hold it. It won't bite you. Okay. All right. Not getting see electrocuted. This, see this beautiful array of uh, all these different symbols? Yeah, it looks like well, hieroglyphics that's uh, right. on here. Yeah. Well, multimeters are used for a lot of uh, diagnostics. Uh, we can measure... Uh, current or voltage. Okay. We can measure different types of voltages, AC, DC. Favorite we can, band, yeah. We can measure resistance in ohms values. We can do continuity testing. So I just want to show you how this kind of works. Okay. Uh, here's a 24 volt. That's plugged in the wall here. Plugged okay. in the wall. Yeah, it's, uh, we've got a 120 volt input. Right. But this transformer steps this voltage down to roughly in the neighborhood of 24 volts AC, alternating current. Okay. So let's see if this transformer works. Okay. What you want to do is set your meter to AC, and it will indicate AC voltage. Okay. See that? Now, which one is AC on here? Ah, you see right here? Oh, there it is. It there says it AC. It says AC. Now, if you it. flipped it over, you keep going, it'll say DC volts. There's DC right, right there. Well, we don't want to measure DC okay. volts. We want to go AC, all right? Okay. Now you just put that down. Okay. Let's put this and going. take the probe and go across these two low voltage contacts. And let's see. Am I we getting a reading? Yeah, we should have about 27 volts. And okay. It, okay, so that's a good So that's a good sign, right? That's yep. a good transform. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Let's try something else. Now, why is that important when a tech's in the field? Like, what scenarios are we needing to measure and make sure we have that reading? All of the controls that we deal with in the heating and air conditioning industry, especially temperature controls, zoning panels, are all UL Class II 24-volt type devices. Okay. So measuring voltage is absolutely important because if you're not getting 24 volts to the device from the transformer, right. nothing's going to work. Gotcha. So that's the first thing you want to do. Hey, do I have voltage? So okay. that's important. Look at here. we got a battery. Yeah. Now, what kind of battery do you think that is? AC or DC? Both. No. DC. All right, let's see what <laughs> let's see what the voltage DC voltage is on this. Okay, so now I purposely answered that wrong. So I you know you correct did. me. I knew that. So, so we're set it to DC. DC. There we go. Right now, you notice there's DC batteries have a plus and a minus. Right. In other words, well, you can. It doesn't hurt if you take your probe and put it across either one, because if you're not. Uh, in line with the plus side and minus side, it's going to read minus. Okay. It doesn't hurt the multimeter. Right. But you can re you can actually test the battery, know which okay. is the positive side. So let's go ahead and put your uh, probe across there. And we should measure, let's see, let me look at that. Yep, look at that, minus nine. Change your probes around. <coughs> now we're on the proper side. And we're at Nine volts. Awesome. So that's DC voltage. Okay. Okay. Now and you're not supposed to lick that battery, right? That's a no-no for techs out there. Right? Well, get shocked. Uh, it doesn't. It won't kill you, but I don't recommend okay. licking anything. A lot of people. <laughs> yeah. okay. Good idea. Good idea. All right. Got a fuse. Okay. Boy, I don't know whether that thing is blowing or not. Okay. How do I know? Well, here's your two contacts that go through the fuse block. Okay. So let's set the meter now on continuity. See that little tone? Little radio, it looks like radio waves. That's yeah, it looks like okay. radio signals right there. All right. Take your probes and just touch them together. Just right like this. Right here. Just touch these together. Oh, touch together. these together. Okay. Hear that little yeah. high pitched noise? I can even hear that. <laughs> All right. So if this fuse is good, that means just like you have. Touch those probes together, so go across two points on the fuse there. Okay, we'll do this so we can see. Just like that? Yep. 
Hear that tone? A beep. Good fuse. That's a quick way to test fuses. Yeah. So that's another nice thing. Now we're going to talk about resistance. This is a resistor. Okay. Uh, I can look at the color bands and tell you what the resistance value is, but I'm not going to. Okay. Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't have my color chart, All even right. though we're supposed to memorize those 1,900 different colors. Oof. So let's put the meter on ohms. That's the symbol for ohms. Right. All right. Okay. And go ahead and just hook these two leads up to your probe. Make it a little easier. Okay, so you just slide them on there, or how does that hook up? Oh, here, well, I forgot. You're a layman. See how that ah, out yes, there? Yes. You grab them, push it. That. All right. I am a layman. I've, I've been called <laughs> worse. Okay, so I'm going to do this and put that across. There you go. Well, hook it. There you go. Hook it. Now hook the other one on there. Now, there is a little hook there when you yeah, pop it there out. There you go. Makes it easy. Yeah. Oops. I'm snapping off there. See, these are, I'm just simulating the troubles that technicians have out in the field. Techs have all kinds of trouble. What are we reading there on resistance value? Uh, I'm reading 9.91. That's right. That's a 10K resistor. Oh, okay. I already knew that, but I just wanted to prove <laughs> it. So uh, that's about 10K. Okay. And resistors also have plus or minus values. Okay. You know, you can have a... a a plus one or plus or minus one value and some other resistors might have a little larger value but uh, resistance is a very important thing uh, in all electronics and we need to know the values of resistors we use resistors in a lot of applications now we're going to show you what happens when we measure ohms values with regards to sensors the sensor, yeah. just about Every thermostat on the market today, electronic thermostat, uses what they call thermistors as a sensor. A thermistor is a device that as the temperature changes, the resistance value changes. Mm -hmm. That resistance value then is interpreted through uh, software on a display on a thermostat okay. as what the temperature is. So whether it's a remote type sensor or whether it's an internal sensor, we can measure the resistance value of that sensor, look at a little chart, and determine what the temperature is in the, is in the space. So let's do the same thing. Okay. Let's just hook these probes up. And this is off the shelf, setting out in the warehouse. I don't really know what the temperature is. <laughs> Do you know and what type of sensor that is? I mean, is it this a, is uh, this is a 10K, 10K Type Three. Type Three. Okay. And uh, it's 77 degrees at 10,000 ohms. Okay. Okay. They call it a 10K Type Three. Yeah. 77 degrees. We don't know what the value is, so let's go ahead and hook those things up again. We okay. still have it on resistance. Grab the other one. Got that one. That one's hooked up. Yeah. And let's see what we're. Uh, yeah, this is a bad one. Let's see what we're reading there. Eleven point zero three. Okay. We're just. We're in the seventy range. If I had to chart out here, I could tell you exactly what it is. It's very important when you're out in the field, especially if you're using remote sensors that are wired to thermostats or a zoning system and you're not getting the type of reading that you're, you're looking for or you don't know if the sensor is properly uh, functioning, Right. you read it with ohms values. If you, re if you read the sensor, like right now, I got, there's a broken wire, it says oh, low. Yeah. In other words, I have an open circuit. It's not the thermistor. Thermistors very, very seldom fail. They're extremely accurate. It's usually wiring. Yeah. So we can trace the problem either at the point where the sensor is back to where it's inputted into a thermostat or a zoning panel. So uh, that's an important part of diagnostics. And again, J.D., with this multimeter, which you're now a pro at. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, right. You, no longer am I a layman. <laughs> you can test probably 99% of the stuff out there that needs to be tested uh, as long as you have, remember, that little screwdriver, that right. jumper wire, and a great flashlight.
and uh, a talented individual like myself. Absolutely. So, and you have the you opportunity go. to call in and talk to one of our talented individuals at Jackson Systems. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us, uh, 888-652-9663. And always check out our website at www.jacksonsystems.com. This has been Field Engineering. This has been Phil. I'm J.D. Brake. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.